So have you guys ever wondered what makes photos look like this? You know, you have like these images of time lapses of, of roads and they kind of have like cars driving on them and you see all the lights sort of stringy and time lapsey to make up a word. Well, this all has to do with shutter speed, just like this next image right here. This is another example of shutter speed used, being used by a photographer to do something really cool. And in this case, it happens to be capturing this bullet in mid-flight. That's very cool. I mean, this has to be a very, very quick photo. So all of this, like I said, it's shutter speed. Now, this is brings up two important questions. First of all, what is shutter speed? And second of all, what determines the speed of the shutter and why do you why do you pick one shutter speed over the other? Well, for example, we're going to start um, first by explaining what the shutter does. And we're going to do it on this page because the next page I've got something kind of cool to show you. So the shutter is kind of like a window. And say, just for imaginary sake, let's just imagine that behind that is your film. So here you've got your film or your sensor and maybe imagine that these are connected and they're not next to each other. <laughs> so your light is shining through your window, boing, onto your film. But usually in front of your window, maybe you have a shutter. And that's your, that's your shutter right here. And imagine when you open that shutter, the light streams in, and then you close the shutter and the light stops streaming in. And that's basically how film is developed. Light needs to fall upon the film and expose it so it can see what's going on outside of the camera, otherwise it can't see what's going on. Um, and then it closes again, so it c can't go forever. It has to only has a, a certain amount of time. It wants to just capture one tiny little instant of light. And um, that is all determined by the photographer and the camera and the meter and lots of other things. Um, so this, but this shutter speed is really important for determining the look of your photograph. So if you're wondering, this image right here is an example of a high shutter speed. So high meaning fast. So this shutter goes click and it's open and closed and story is done. You've captured your bullet, you've captured your um, smoke flying everywhere and fire flying everywhere. Pretty exciting photo, right? And the photo before that is an example of a low shutter speed or a slow photograph. Now this image right here shows you an example of what those things look like if you were to put them all sort of right next to each other. This is actually three separate pictures that have been stitched together into one by some guy on Wikipedia who I think did a pretty cool job of explaining shutter speed with this image. So let's just imagine that this shutter speed right here is one five hundredth of a second. And maybe this one right here is a thirtieth of a second. And this one right here is a quarter of a second. So even a quarter of a second, that's pretty fast. I mean, a second is a pretty long time, but a quarter of a second is a, little, a lot less. A thirtieth of a second is pretty fast, and a five hundredth of a second is very fast. And actually, if you add um, some more zeros behind this, you get into some shutter speeds that now exist these days with digital cameras that are pretty amazing. Um, but a five hundredth of a second is pretty good for capturing action. So imagine that this little daisy wheel here is spinning, and in that 500th of a second, it has moved so little that it looks like it's standing still. It looks exactly like it's standing still because you've captured it's moving. It's th that shutter speed is so quick. But in the 30th of a second, you can see that during the time that the shutter was open, so the shutter goes open, and the daisy wheel keeps moving, and then click, the shutter closes over here. So in that time, this little arm of the daisy wheel has moved a ways and that motion is then captured in blur. That's just the color or sort of the, the impression um, because the light is falling off of it in each one of those little thousandths of a second between when the shutter opens and closes and it's landing on the film or on the sensor. And in the quarter of a second shot it's going even further. It's going a lot further actually and so it goes shutter opens here and then it's kind of the daisy wheel travels and travels and travels and then stop, click, photo is done. So it's traveled quite a long, a lot longer. Um, you can see it's traveled so long that the colors have started to mix. And so that's just the principle. Why The shutter speed captures the motion that happens while it is open. And that can, that c generally comes in the form of some sort of blurred motion. It can come in other forms too, but in general it's in sort of some sort of movement of the object. Now old shutter speeds, back in the day, were shutter speeds were determined by springs. There used to be all these springs inside of cameras and kind of like ding, 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 you pulled the spring so tight and it would 
make the shutter go so fast and you pull it a little tighter and it would go faster. And um, over time, the system developed itself in the way that each shutter speed back in, on the traditional scale was either twice as fast or half as half as fast. So basically, let's start with um, let's start with a thousandth of a second. That's the fastest image you could have taken with this camera back then. And they determined then, well, we'll make a five hundredth underneath that, which is one half. So that's one half the speed. Now it goes down in that pattern all the way down until you get to here where the math gets a little funny. But <laughs> that's not exactly a half. It's kind of like sort of a half. But Basically, as you're moving down, the shutter speeds are are cutting themselves in half, allowing twice as much light in. So um, a 500th of a second allows twice as much light in as a thousandth of a second if everything else on the camera is, stays the same, which we'll talk about that in the exposure lesson a little later. Now, let's talk really quickly about some different um, shutter speeds that you can use for different situations. So we're going to be talking here about freezing motion. And this is um, really important for if you're out there shooting and you want to make sure that your images are clear and that your, your people aren't moving in them and things like that. So we're going to list off some here um, to 125 got 1 to 50th 1 500th and a thousandth so let's start with a 30th and I would say if you're a beginner photographer I would say leave this to um, professionals or for emergencies um, this shutter speed, when you get down below a thirtieth of a second, things get really slow, and you're 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 taking really slow photos, and any kind of motion blur or anything like that um, is uh, is going to come up in your photos. So you want to make sure don't go quite that low when you're first starting out. Once you get a little more experience, you're welcome to it. But now, if you w you're out taking just sort of daily photos of things that aren't moving, so we call them still life, so still life portraits or um, even portraits of people. Um, you can take a still life photo a 60th of a second with most lenses just fine. And um, I would say once you get above a hundredth of a second, you can start using that for um, daily shots. Uh, that's just kind of like regular things, people walking, moving around, but not too quickly. You'll see an example of that just a little bit here. Um, a great all around speed is 250th of a second. So for most daily situations, if you can, you know, and you want to freeze your motion, you don't want to make some artistic sort of blurry photos, a 250th is a great place to start trying out all around photography. Um, a 500th is so sort of for motion shots and so fast motion shots, um, sort of people doing ath athletics and things like that that don't require too much moving. And then you've got a thousandth of a second for fast mo motion shots. So you've got someone maybe running by you on a track or something like that really quickly. Um, or maybe you're trying to capture a race car perfectly still without any motion. Um, you can try about a thousandth of a, sh of, a, of a second. So you can see here these are all different speeds and you'll understand them once you go out and play with your camera a little bit. But just wanted to give you a general introduction. Now, sometimes you're going to want to let that blur happen. I was out walking the other day in Berlin, and I saw this water fountain, and I thought, oh, I have a lesson coming up about shutter speed. I want to make sure these guys have an example. So I took a really quick example here, um, example shot, and I have one here that is taken at 1 400th of a second, and I've got one that is taken at a 30th of a second, and I'm guessing you can already guess which one was at a 30th of a second. Um, and you can see that in that 400th of a second, this water butt droplet here did not move very far. It's pretty much captured it perfectly still. And in this one, the water droplets were moving really quickly, and I, you can see that I'm catching each one of them. I mean, they're moving at the same speed, but I'm capturing them more slowly. So in that 30th of a second, you can see the water moved a lot further while the shutter was open than it did in the 400th of a second. Same thing goes for the hands right here. This is, um, I went to a concert of a friend of mine, Sam, who's um, sh playing the drum here, and you can see his hands are pretty well captured in this 400th of a second. Um, they're a little blurry if you look at the full version because his hands were moving really fast. I probably should have taken them at about a thousand, but in this small version of the picture, you don't see the motion as bad. Here you've got one twenty-fifth of a second, and some of the pictures, his hands were moving a little more, but um, you can still see there's a little bit of motion blur there, and even on this hand in the big version, you can see that there's a little bit of motion blur. And then here I've got one thirtieth of a second, so you can add ones to the tops of all of these numbers here. Um, 
you can see I've completely lost all detail in his hands, and you can actually see his shirt through his hands. Um, his fingers haven't fallen off, I guarantee. But um, he is just moving so quickly that the camera's not picking up his big fingers anymore. And even this hand is a little blurry, which was he was holding very still at that one moment. So um, you can see here that there's lo just a very big difference in how the camera perceives motion according to how quickly it's taking that photograph. All right, so this is an example of intentional blur. And so when you're a photographer, you have to kind of ask yourself the question, do I want to make a static picture or do I want to make a dynamic picture? And sometimes, you know, you kind of want to do both. Sometimes you want to do one or the other. Um, and this one right here would be an example of a photographer saying, I want to make a dynamic photograph. And you can see here, you can then see the motion of the water. So he's taken this photograph probably around, I would say, a quarter of a second. Um, and at that shutter speed, you've just got light, the light shining off of this beautiful scene here with water moving all over the place. And it's really capturing that motion of that water. This isn't fog, that's just water sloshing all around inside of all these rocks. Um, it looks like fog, but that's just kind of um, the effect that he was going for. It's actually called sometimes the cotton candy effect when you are dealing with water and you're trying to make it look all blurry and cotton candy-like. So that's how you do that. You move your shutter speed down to a quarter of a second and see how it looks. You can also try panning, and this was uh, taken at about a 40th of a second. Someone was just taking a photograph of a chicken. Um, you can do this with your little brother if you would like to, or your little sister. Make them run around in the yard while you take their picture. Um, you can also try it at speeds are lower than a 40th or higher, but basically the camera just follows the motion. So the, f the camera, the viewer in looked in the camera and they tried to keep that chicken's head right in the middle of the camera and they just followed them as they were running and snapped the photograph. And in that time, the camera moved a little ways, the land moved a ways, the chicken moved a ways, but this head remains steady because that ch head wasn't moving at all. So that's kind of a very cool example of, this is called panning. I'll write that out for you. I hope you can... I hope you can see that. I'm running out of time here, so I'm not going to correct it. All right. Now here you can see an example of just a little bit of motion blur in a daily picture. This photograph was taken at 125th of a second. Um, and you can just see that this, this happens. I thought it was acceptable for this photo to have a little bit of motion blur, and that was kind of dark and cloudy, so I kind of needed that motion. But that's what it looks like. Here you can also see an example of what happens when um, the subject is moving across a big section of your sensor. Um, this person up front is a little closer than the person back here, so he's moving on the, on the, according to the sensor less than this person to the left. And so you can see that this guy is more blurred than this guy right here. So that your distance to your subject is going to affect your blurriness as well and their size in the, in, in the viewfinder. And this last image is just of motion blur. You can see here I've kind of zoomed in. This is actually a zoomed in version of this little section right here. Um, and I keep choosing the wrong darn colors. Um, and you can see here during the taking of this picture, I moved the camera a little bit. I didn't mean to. I just kind of shook my hand. And you can see that then the, ca the image, this end image in the back, is totally blurry. And if you zoom in closely, you can see why. It's because the camera moved a little bit. So that's the danger of having a low shutter speed. That's why I advise you know messing around with less than a 30th of a second only when you kind of know what you're doing. Otherwise, you'll get, up, uh, get a lot of blurred images. Um, this image was taken at about a tenth of a second. All right, so that is your lesson about shutter speed. I want you guys to go out there and mess around with all of them and try everything out. Um, and when you are ready, come back to allversity.org and check out more videos.